Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining me tonight. I want to share with you how we're going to kickstart your health for this new year. And I want to kickstart it by reducing your addiction, and it is an addiction, to sugar. I'm going to show you six steps that you can do to reduce your addiction to sugar. But I'm not going to ask you to go cold turkey. I'm not going to say, right, stop eating chocolate as of tonight. <laughs> I'm going to wean you off sugar very, very slowly so that you don't even notice. So here is the presentation I want to share with you this evening. I'm Adele from Get Gorgeous. My aim is to make you leaner, fitter and shapelier you. Six steps to lose your sugar addiction. Adele Stickland, I am Get Gorgeous health coach, a nutritionist, fitness instructor, and a mindset coach. Have you and Santa had enough of sugar yet? <laughs> have you got mince pie burnout? I know I have. Somebody opened the quality streets in my house in mid-November, <laughs> and oh, it started going very wrong after that. So, why is sugar so bad for you? That's what we're going to cover this evening. And why are you so addicted to it? And it might surprise you to know that it's not actually your fault. It is an addictive nature. Sugar will connect with the opiate receptors in your brain and it makes it incredibly addictive. So, what you can do to come off of this addiction and above all, Get Gorgeous is all about honouring and respecting your body. Why? What has led me to be talking to you today? Well, I've never, I've never, I haven't always been skinny. In my 20s and 30s, I was a very large lady and um, that was due to various things basically trying to study going to university meant that um, I didn't eat correctly I didn't well I was exercising but fitness was all about eating more carbs to give you more energy and I didn't understand nutrition I kept eating more pasta more bread hiya welcome on board just saying hi to everybody it's great to have you here and what I'm trying to quickly go over is why I'm here this evening and why I want to help you to reduce your sugar intake and how I'm going to do it. So this is me in my 20s and 30s. I gained a huge amount of weight, got much, much bigger because I didn't understand nutrition because I was a fitness instructor, but I still believed that carbs were giving me energy. And when I say carbohydrates... I mean white carbs, not green carbs. I felt that carbohydrates were giving me energy, but they were also creating storage fat. And that led to, to me becoming obese in my 20s and 30s. And as I've got older, I've managed to control that. And I am much stronger now. Why do I think I can help you? Well, it's my mission to help you to feel and look fantastic every day. I want you to use nutritional habits that are going to help you to get stronger. And I want you to create more movement in your, in your day and a healthy mindset that will work for you. So I'm a health coach. Um, I'm a food and exercise, a gorgeous coach. Let's see if I can quieten that down. No. Um, and I'm used to working with a range of health and nutritional issues. I am a specialist in Pilates. You know that. You've seen enough of my videos on Facebook to know that I love Pilates. Um, and this photo here is me in New Zealand visiting Les Mills, um, which is my little mecca. What I really love about feeling healthy is that I get to do crazy things. I don't know if you saw me on Facebook this Christmas, but I was jumping in the Irish Sea. <laughs> that may was a little bit daft, 
but enjoyable nonetheless. And this is my husband. This is um, our annual challenge. We go cycling every year and we run um, as well. This was um, a big birthday treat. I will never do it again. Jumping out of an airplane, not fun. <laughs> and this is my youngest. This is Zoe, my youngest daughter, and I have to keep up with her. So that's why feeling healthy is so important to me. One of the biggest things about nutritional health, one of the biggest mistakes that people make is following the NHS guidelines. At the moment, this is the eat well plate as it stands. And I talked about green carbs and beige and white carbs. So in the green carbs, you've got things like vegetables, you've got cauliflower, got frozen peas, aubergines, things like that. These are your green carbohydrates. These are healthy carbohydrates and they should be a huge part of your diet. You know that, five of your day. This section is your white and your beige carbohydrates. There are cereals, bread, spaghetti, bagels and potatoes all in this section. Now, if you put these two sections together, you'll see that over half of your plate, 75%, 70% of your plate is made up of carbohydrates. Now, if you look at our ancestors, Neolithical man, he had 5% of his intake was carbohydrates, a little amount of fruit, and it, none of it was as ripe as we would um, purchase in supermarkets and places like that. But now, our intake of carbohydrates is over 70%. It is too much for us to live on. You'll also see that the fat section on the Eat Well plate is tiny and it is processed fats, it is vegetable oil fats. And these types of fats are highly processed and they are not good for you. This section is your dairy and this section is your protein. So 20% of your diet is protein, fantastic. 70% is carbohydrates and a sliver our fats. This is out of proportion to what we were eating. Ancestors were eating far less than this. Michael Mosley, low fat myth. This is his pedestal. He watched his father die of um, diabetes. He um, was put on the healthy heart diet, his father, and he got bigger, bigger and bigger. And in the end, um, he believed, and that's why he started the 5-2 diet, he believed that sugar is the killer. And when I talk about sugar, I mean carbohydrates because carbohydrates are broken down into glucose in the body and glucose is sugar. So sugar is, has no value. It has no nutritional value. So your white sugar, the thing that breaks down into your body, has no nutritional value. And it also says it signals the body that you're full, but it gives nutritional food would do that. But sugar gives you no such signal. And artificial sweeteners are even worse. What they tend to do is they enter the body like high fructose corn sugar or aspartamane, these kind of artificial sweeteners come into your body and they trigger a sweet response in your body. So your body is expecting sugar and it doesn't get it, but it still releases insulin. So your body needs to do something with that insulin. So it just sits in your love handles. Artificial sweeteners are no better for your body. It still triggers the same reaction in your body. The natural fruit that we have, high, high fruit like grapes, banana and mangoes, they are all very, very high in the um, fructose scale and they trigger such a big sugar reaction. So I really want you to rethink your sugar. If you think that, if you know that sugar is addictive, it stimulates the opiate receptors. It stimulates the receptors in your brain that trigger that feel-good sensation. It is highly dangerous for your body and 
fizzy drinks not only have a huge amount of sugar, they also have a huge amount of caffeine. So I've got a little, little quiz for you here, a little um, discussion. A chocolate cake, a slice of chocolate cake has about 69 grams of sugar in it, which is the equivalent of 17 teaspoons of sugar. And that is as much as an energy drink. OK, so chocolate cake and an energy drink have the same amount of sugar. Now, what do you think should be your average intake of sugar? How many grams and how many teaspoons do you think you should have? I'll tell you at the end of this, but I'd love to know what you think. So if a chocolate cake has the same sugar intake as an energy drink, how much sugar do you think you should be having? So two patisseries, if you were having two croissants, you'd probably have about 23 grams worth of sugar, which is the equivalent of six teaspoons of sugar, which is the equivalent of a glass of fruit juice. So I remember the day that a friend of mine, a very good friend of mine said to me, fruit juice is causing obesity in children. And I was devastated. I was shocked. It wasn't so long ago that I was still feeding my only son at the time. Then I was still giving him fruit juice all the time. I thought I was doing him a favor, giving him apple juice rather than orange juice. But no, not at all. Fruit juice, six teaspoons of sugar, 23 grams. It's the equivalent of two patisseries. And fruit juice, all the fiber has been taken out. So your body can't digest it. Well, it does digest it very, very quickly. So the other equivalent, three fairy cakes, round about six grams of sugar, six teaspoons. Oh, that can't be right. I've done my maths wrong there, which is the same as elderflower cordial. So elderflower cordial is the equivalent of three fairy cakes. And you think, well, how bad can that be? Full of sugar. Seven digestives, four grams. And that is the same as a cordial drink, like a fruit, a uh, little fruit shoot or something like that. And red wine, I thought I'd just throw that in for you. Red wine has 0.5 grams of sugar. Oh, so I'll drink all the red wine that I want, Adele. It's got no sugar in. Mm, yeah, but it still triggers the same response in your body. Alcohol triggers the same response. It goes down the same metabolic pathway. But before we talk about that, what do you think is the average? What should you be having on a regular daily basis? How many spoonfuls of sugar do you think you should be having? Shout it out, write it in the chat box for me. Um, and let me know what you think. 17 teaspoons in a chocolate cake and an energy drink. Six. You should be having an average of six teaspoons of sugar a day. So it's one cube is about one teaspoon, which is about four grams. So let's talk a little bit about the what this sugar effect has on your body. Now, sugar has a huge amount of names. There's apparently there's 52 names for sugar. Things like coconut, palm sugar, and treacle, an obvious one. Hydrogenized starch is another one. Molasses, all sounds very happy and good for you, but it is not. So high fructose corn sugar, is hidden in all sorts of products. Things like fizzy drinks, you know that. You know that fizzy drinks carry a lot of HFCS, high fructose corn sugar. This is the modified sugar that the manufacturer, food manufacturer makes in order to reduce calories and give your drinks and your food a longer life. High fructose corn sugar. So you know that it's in fizzy drinks, but did you know that is also in sweets, chocolate bars, boiled sweets? Yeah, okay, Dale, that's kind of, we kind of thought that was true. But it's also in yogurt. Yeah, yogurt. Yogurt contains high fructose corn sugar, especially the low calorie ones, the low fat ones. So they take out 
sugar and they put in artificial sugar. It is also in salad dressings, frozen meals, classic high fructose corn sugar, bread. There is this additive in bread, granola. So lots of people that I work with want to swap their breakfast cereal. They want to go for something healthier. They want to give up the Frosties or, you know, something they've been having a lot. So they'll go towards granola. Granola has at least six teaspoons full of sugar, if not more. Cereals, an awful lot more. Things like jam and ice cream have a huge amount of sugar. And can I tell you the really scary one? Pasta sauce. Pasta sauce can have as much as eight teaspoons of sugar. And sugar in these drinks contains things like phosphoric acid. And this phosphoric acid is known, it's it's actually used in industry to inhibit rust. It is also put into cleaning products and it is added to your food. It is in your fizzy drinks and it is in your processed food. It's what gives the food that tangy flavor. It gives the flavor some real intensity. And phosphoric acid also slows down bacteria growth. So it allows the product to last longer on the shelves. So this phosphoric acid, it, the side effects, if you're susceptible, if you're used to listening to your body, you'll, you might get irritated eyes or throat. You might start to get headache. You might feel a little bit of nausea or sickness. You might even cramp or get diarrhea. And that's a sign that this phosphoric acid is just becoming too much in your body. So it's also in things like cereal bars, iced tea, and processed food. It's that tangy flavor makes the flavoring really, really intense. And the dangers of phosphoric acid are fivefold, minimum fivefold. So what really frightens me is osteoporosis and phosphoric acid lowers your bone density it is especially prevalent in spine and hips and it leads to osteoporosis so too much phosphoric acid in your sugary products like fizzy drinks and processed foods and cereal bars and iced teas they all contain phosphoric acid and if you're having too much of that it leads to osteoporosis the other issue, the other danger with this acid is that it can create kidney issues like kidney stones. Ever had a kidney stone? Oh, that's painful. This is a sign that you've got too much phosphorus in your diet. Increased phosphorus means a reduction in calcium because what happens is that phosphorus creates this huge acidity in your body so a fizzy drink has an acid of a ph of 2.5 do you remember your school physics and your school chemistry what should your body be what should your body's ph be ph got it do you remember i can't remember if it's 7.7 .7 or 7.5 so if a fizzy drink has got a pH of 2.5, what is that telling you? The body is too acidic, and that is created by this from your fizzy drinks. But not just your fizzy drinks, from your processed foods, from your cereal bars, from all the places that sugar hides and you didn't even know it was there. Tomato sauce, pasta sauce, all these things, salad dressing, can contain hidden sugar, hidden phosphoric acid. So the, if the phosphorus is too high, the calcium is reduced and you cannot absorb iron, magnesium and zinc. You are actually creating nutritional deficiency. The acidity goes up and your body has to buffer this acidity by leaching calcium out of your bones it leaches calcium out of your bones in order to bring down the acidity and make the body more alkaline now because this is an acid 
it also damages your human tissue it is a corrosive chemical it is used to inhibit rust so what is it going to do to your body and these are the hidden reasons why you need to reduce sugar why you need to reduce processed foods and also the big thing that i said earlier about alcohol 0.5 sugar so why worry about it ah but alcohol and sugar have the same metabolic pathway they don't go through the digestive system they go through the liver so it means that alcohol as you probably know stimulates hunger but your body cannot deal with processing your food because it needs to deal with the poison it needs to deal with the alcohol alcohol takes precedence so that means your body doesn't break down fat so you actually get more hungry when you're on alcohol and but your body can't break any of that down because it needs to break down the alcohol first and the liver function if it is dysregulated if it's trying to deal with the alcohol then it can't regulate your blood sugar levels so it means you get more and more hungry addiction i've said this right at the beginning sugar is addictive and it gives you a surge your body will release neurotransmitters i love that word neurotransmitters communicate information around your body from your brain down your nervous system into the cells and these chemicals are dopamine and serotonin so you get this huge buzz huge buzz from sugar and it affects your mood your sleep your concentration and your weight so they've done these brain scans and they looked at the neurotransmitter um, and how it affected the brain and i said at the beginning that the opiate receptors so opiates are cocaine, heroin, morphine. They are triggered in this brain scan here. And look, it's the same place as sugar. <laughs> so every time you're eating your cereal bar or your healthy granola, you are triggering <laughs> the opiate receptor that triggers cocaine. So you might feel a slight buzz. <laughs> Hot buttery toast what does that say to you does that make the, the the coin drop does that allow you to understand what i'm trying to say you love hot buttered toast because the sugar in the bread triggers the same receptor in your brain as cocaine <laughs> So neurotransmitters, they are very, very interesting because they do all sorts of different jobs. So some neurotransmitters calm you down and others excite you. Serotonin is like Valium. It slows you down. And others are excitatory and they overstimulate you. And sugar helps to overstimulate you and when it overstimulates you it causes anxiety and stress it is also linked to brain inflammation and this is the research that people are carrying out right now brain inflammation very similar to well they're looking at the same inflammation that is causing parkinson's disease um, dementia and Alzheimer's all three of those are linked to inflammation and sugar causes inflammation I've got, got another little quiz for you I'd like to know what you think I have cereals which cereals do you think are the healthiest so I said to you earlier six teaspoons that's your daily limit on sugar but if you're having something like frosties for breakfast so this is my little imagery here healthy cereal it's the equivalent of eating loads and loads of donuts um, frosties 37 grams of sugar in a bowl which is nine and a half teaspoons crunchy nut corn flakes nine teaspoons corn flakes is eight grams which is two teaspoons 
and Weetabix is one teaspoon. So how much was granola? I have told you. I have told you today. So what do you think? Well, it's 29 grams of sugar. It's not the healthy option that you think it is. It is round about six teaspoons worth of sugar. I also mentioned the names of sugar. Lots of lots of different names. So when you're looking on your food labels, these are the things that you need to look out for. Barley malt. How do you know that that's sugar? Well, malt is sugar. Brown rice syrup. Corn syrup. Look for that in your, not just your fizzy drinks, in your, in your solid food, in your processed food. Dextrin, another word for sugar. Dextrose and fructose. Anything that ends in O's is generally sugar. But I've also mentioned other names. Do you remember how many other names sugar comes under? At least 52. I don't think I've made that up. I think that's what I remember. 52 different names for sugar. Coconut palm sugar. Now we hear the word coconut. We think, oh, that's quite trendy. That's quite clean. No. Coconut palm sugar is another word for sugar. Treacle, bit of an obvious one. Agave nectar. I get asked all the time, well, if I'm not having white sugar, is it okay to have honey? Is it okay to have agave nectar? No, it's the same thing. It's going to do the same thing to your body. So look out for those names. The real issue that I have with too much sugar is that it actually causes damage to your heart. The pumping mechanism of your heart is affected. Think about sugary water. It's like a sludge. And it is really hard for your heart, which is a muscle, to pump, pump, pump sugar, sugary blood around your body it's really difficult it's a real strain on your heart on that muscle to pump round your whole body it's like a sludge and that creates high blood pressure so sugar is a far greater threat to your heart than fat has ever been avoid it Belly fat. Now we've talked about this briefly. Insulin is produced by your body every time that you eat a carbohydrate. Now, whether that's a green carbohydrate and whether that's a white or a brown carbohydrate. If you eat a white or brown carbohydrate, then your glycemic index is going to be higher than if it's green, okay? But they're all carbohydrates, they just have a different GI scale, glycemic index scale. So if you're eating brown bread or white bread, that's gonna have a much higher GI than some kale. <laughs> but they're still gonna have the same effect to your body, but much more temperate, much easier to deal with. And when you eat carbohydrates, you produce, the body breaks it down into glucose. And glucose triggers a reaction in the body. It triggers the insulin. And insulin is the hormone that dieters either love or loathe. Insulin creates fat storage. And if you're eating a lot of sugar, if you're taking on your Christmas dinner with, I, I am really bad this Christmas, but if you're taking on a lot of sugar, then insulin goes into panic mode. It deals with the sugar by pushing it out into belly fat. It puts it out into the love handles. And too much insulin affects your cortisol level as well. And when it sits around your belly, it creates visceral fat, fat around your organs. It's the worst type of fat. So reading your ingredients, reading your ingredients and knowing what your favorite fruit food has is really, really important. So I've talked about it, tomato sauce. That's going to have an awful lot of sugar in your fat-free dressings, all salad dressings have sugar in, fat-free are gonna have even more. 
marinades. We talked about pasta sauces, orange juices, baked beans, bread. All these things are going to have a lot of sugar. So here is a food label. And you can see that it's got no fat. Oh, so it's healthy for me. But if you look into the serving size, and the calories are all coming up with zero, but the sugar in this is five grams. And that's from a salad dressing. So if you're adding a little bit of that on top of other things in your meal, then this is going to add to the total sugar load in your body. So one of the things I want you to do is look at your food labels. And if sugar, with all those different names that we talked about, is one of the first three ingredients, then you know to avoid that product. I mean, ideally, what I would love you to do is eat food that has no ingredient list. <laughs> and what does that give you? Kale and a bit of cheese and things like that. Things that have no ingredients. But if you are going to have um, a little treat and you are going to have something with an ingredient, then make sure that the first three do not contain sugar. So if you think that something has got 14% sugar in per 100 ml, that's 14% sugar. So something like a 250 ml drink, a normal drink, and that's got 14% sugar per 100 ml, times that by 2.5, which is a 250 ml, that's going to give you 35 grams of sugar. That's eight and a half teaspoons. So you know that what you're drinking is taking you over and above your daily sugar intake. Okay, once you know this, you cannot walk away from it. I can't look at elderflower elderflower cordial anymore because I know that it's got 8.5 teaspoons of sugar in it. So I just walk away. I mean, Coca-Cola, don't even go near it. I'm going to give you this sugar checklist. I'm going to send you an email and I will send you the sugar checklist. So don't worry, but that will outline all of these um, maths that I've done here. So part of your tools, part of knowing what to do is to create a little bit of belief. You can do this. Believe in yourself. I've, I've tried to explain all the things why you should be avoiding sugar. And I've tried to create knowledge around why you should be avoiding sugar. But now you have to believe that you can do it. Don't chastise yourself. Don't tell yourself off. Don't say, right, I'm going sugar free tomorrow because it's not possible. Start with an education. Start by knowing that elderflower cordial has got a lot of sugar in it. Coca-Cola has got a lot of sugar in it. Pasta sauce has got a lot of sugar in it. Knowing this stuff is enough. Believing in yourself is enough. Then start to make little swaps. So if you're buying, and this was a classic for me, if you're buying baked beans and you don't want to give up baked beans, but you know they've got sugar in, look at the brands. Look at the brands. I was flabbergasted when I looked at own label sugar, uh, own label baked beans, and I compared it with Heinz or a product or a brand. And the difference in sugar is incredible. So make little swaps. Be aware. If you're going out for a hot chocolate, so a hot chocolate from a coffee shop can be as much as 10 spoonfuls of sugar. So if you're having a hot chocolate, why not change it to a herbal tea? And if I can't get used to a herbal tea, maybe a coffee. OK, so make little swaps. Change your sugar habit slowly. Hot drinks. So I just said that one. Excuse me. Hot drinks. Instead of going for a hot chocolate, which is full of sugar, go for a green tea. A green tea, as you, if you know me, you know I love green tea. Green tea is full of antioxidants. An antioxidant is going to improve your body and mop up all your free radicals. Green tea is good for you. Green tea is going to help your metabolism. So start to make little tiny swaps. Change your croissant for 
um, a protein breakfast, maybe boiled eggs or poached eggs, salmon and poached eggs. Start to make little swaps. If you're having a sandwich for lunch, start to change the sandwich into a ham salad. Or even better, a mackerel salad, omega-3 fatty acids, a mackerel salad for lunch. Does that sound appetizing? No, no, it doesn't. Okay, you make the swaps. You make the swaps that work for you. Now, one of the reasons why you're seeing all the A-listers drinking coconut water is because it's sweet, but it doesn't have as much sugar in it. So that's why coconut water is really popular at the moment. Cinnamon. Cinnamon can be your best friend. Cinnamon can help you to improve the sweetness in your porridge for instance or you can add it to various other things it's going to make the, the food that you eat a little bit sweeter without doing without adding sugar so you can try cinnamon and make one swap at a time one swap don't try and do everything tomorrow morning try and do a little bit every single week change one thing at a time so here are my little tools for you to walk away with Believe in yourself. Believe that you can do this. I know you can. I've worked through hundreds of girls that have done this. Believe that you can. Make swaps. Make a little swap. Hot chocolate to green tea or hot chocolate to normal tea. Or maybe you're swapping your breakfast cereal for eggs. Maybe you're swapping your lunch for a healthier lunch, which are green carbs and fatty acids, mackerel salad. Or maybe your swap is your biscuit. Your afternoon biscuit can swap to something else. Hot drinks. Look at the hot drinks that you're consuming. And if you're adding sugar into your hot drinks, that's your little work that you can work on. Coconut water, adding cinnamon. And please just do one swap at a time. I want you to make the impossible possible. Now, when I work with clients, I don't ask them to go cold turkey. I don't say to you, take out all the sugar in your diet right now. It won't work. You'll crash and burn. So what I'd like you to do is add in positive nutritional habits. And this is the basis of Kickstart. You add in more water. Cheers. You add in water, you spend a week, add in water, and that will help to push out sugar. Then I ask you to add more protein. Protein at breakfast, protein at lunch, protein at dinner. Women generally don't eat enough protein. I've talked to you about fats. You should be eating more fats. Your brain is made out of 60%, it could be 40%, I can't remember the statistics, of cholesterol. If you're not eating fat, you cannot function properly. So you need to be eating more fat. So what I want you to do is work week one on water, week two on protein, week three on fats, week four on adding more of the right carbohydrates, vegetables. And I want you to reduce your starchy, your white and beige carbs. And I want you to do one swap at a time. Be kind. Take your time, respect your body, and most of all, be a happy learner. Trust, trust yourself. You don't need to do everything perfectly. You don't need to do it all right, right now. Be perfectly imperfect. I have been a very naughty girl over Christmas, but I know that after Christmas, I'm going to take my time and I'm going to make sure that I reduce my sugar by adding in positive habits. And I want to work with you. I want to help you do this. I want us to do it together. So from Monday night, Monday the 7th of January, I want you to come on the call. I want you to chat to me. I want you to tell me how you're getting on with your water. I want you to tell me what swap you're doing and then we'll do it the next week and the next week you can tell me how much protein you're adding what meals you're adding it to 
and you can tell me the swaps that you've done just how you're feeling if you've got a sugar hangover stuff like that well you and i can chat it through together does that sound good because you know that if you've got someone holding your hand it's more likely to work if you've got somebody that's in the same boat as you talking about the same things it's much more effective we know that group work is fantastic i'd like you to join me on monday night monday january the 7th i keep looking at my diary because i forget the day so i'm going to do group calls seven o'clock at night it's like this we're all going to come on the call but you're going to be on video if you want yeah yeah no you are going to be on video <laughs> Um, and we're going to chat and you're going to tell me what you've done over the weekend and then the next week we're going to talk about the next habit and you're going to tell me what you've done that week as well so I'm going to do three calls three calls starting on the 7th of January and normally when I do kickstart I normally it's 189 pounds stop faffing about Adele tell me how much this is going to cost kickstart is normally 189 pounds without the calls so I'm putting in three calls and if you want more calls if you think no I haven't got this quite right then that's what we can talk about and I'll add in more calls I'm going to offer you 50% off <laughs> 50% off plus the calls okay because I want to start on Monday and I want to do it with you I don't want to do it on my own <laughs> so if you're interested in joining me for six weeks sugar free and I'm not going to ask you to go cold turkey I'm going to bring in healthy habits and then those healthy habits will start you off on a really good healthy kickstart to your health for 2019 and it will help you to bring down your sugar intake it will happen subconsciously you won't notice but suddenly your taste buds will change i remember speaking to a really lovely client fiona and she said to me but am i going to be allowed to eat cake it's not that you won't be allowed to eat cake. It's that I will change your taste buds. You won't fancy it. You won't want to eat cake. Believe me? Well, let's try it together. So Monday night, we're going to start on Monday night, the 7th of January. What I'd like you to do now is go online and go to www.get-gorgeous.com forward slash register forward slash gg dash kick dash start forward slash and you go on to that I'm, in fact i'm going to bring it up for you as well if you go on to that i'm going to stop that share and i'm going to come over to another share <laughs> if you come over to this you'll see i've gone on to get hyphen gorgeous.com forward slash register forward slash gg forward slash gg dash kick dash start you'll see 189 pounds for three months put in your details but here where it says have a coupon if you click that have a coupon coupon it'll put coupon code so what i want you to do because you've joined me today is click in there and put kickstart 50 <gasps> and then after you put in all your details sign up and we can get started on monday working together and that's going to give you 50 percent off okay i'm going to leave it there oh i need to check to see if Brilliant. I was just checking to make sure everybody was happy. It looks like you all are. When you're ready to join me, drop me an email, put in your details and let's start working together. I can't wait. I'll speak to you very, very soon. Look out for my emails and I will be in touch. So this offer obviously is going to close on Sunday night. On Sunday the 6th. 
because it's going to start on Monday. So you've only got to the weekend to sort it out and, and really tonight to get started. But anyway, I'll speak to you soon. Take care, my lovelies. Thank you so much for joining me. I've loved chatting to you tonight. Did you... I'll just put the website address. Into the box so that you know and the code is all one word kickstart 50 all one word look out for my emails and i'll speak to you soon bye